It's July and yep, I am thinking about the holidays. And I know that sounds crazy, but hear me out on this. Stick around to see how I plan for the holidays. Hi friends and welcome to The Budget Bounce. If we haven't met yet, I'm Jen and I talk all about living life on a budget and our money on this channel. I'm talking about how we uh, spend our money, how we save our money for the future, how we are paying off debt, and I show all of our numbers throughout our zero-based budget that we use every single month. So if that's the kind of thing you're interested in, then make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and tap on the bell. And make sure and leave me a comment and let me know how you're doing with your holiday planning. Um, or even let me know if you think that I'm nuts for talking about this in July. I can take it. No problem. But let's just jump into this and talk a little bit about why I am even talking to you in July about the holidays. So no matter what your background, there are actually a lot of holidays that fall in the last couple of months of the year. And it, you know, it doesn't matter if you're celebrating Christmas or Hanukkah, or maybe you're celebrating celebrating Kwanzaa. If you're in the U.S., you're celebra celebrating Thanksgiving. Um, there's New Year's Eve. I mean, there are so many things that are going on in this very short period of time, even if we look at Halloween, which is just a month before, uh, before Thanksgiving. And so there's a lot of stuff going on at the end of the year. And it all can be very costly. I mean, it's about more than giving gifts to people and having to buy gifts. There is so much more to it. The bottom line is I actually start saving for the holidays as soon as the holidays end in January. So January, I'm saving for what's coming at the end of this year. And so I've been saving all year and sometimes I pick up things in the middle of the year that'll be uh, Christmas gifts and things like that or decor that we're gonna use for Thanksgiving or for Halloween or whatever. It's a really good idea to be thinking about this because we all know it's coming. So let's not let's not be in denial and put a little bit of money away each month, each each week, however, each pay period, however you want to do it. Set up an account that is specifically for the holidays. And then let's go into my spreadsheet and I'm going to show you all the things that I plan for for the holidays. All right, guys, so I'm going to start by showing you what I used last year. So for 2019, this was my holiday budget and um, the top section is all about gifts. And I identified who and category of who these people are, you know, family, work, that kind of thing. So I um, had lots of columns here and then I had these other activities down here. So I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail, but this is what I used. I even tracked whether or not I wrapped the gifts. I, I deleted this because I thought I was gonna start over with this and then I decided to do something different altogether. Let me show you what, I've, what I'm working on. And this is evolving, but this is what I plan on using for this year. Here, this is my gift giving planner that I'm going to use. And I copied over all the names and I need to fill this in. I've made this so that it's a drop down. So Matt is family and my budget for him is usually around $50 and the destination would be for under the tree. And notice I have several choices here. Um, if you have like a, a church activity that you're doing that you're going to be taking a gift to, or um, we have stocking and tree, I give gifts to my entire team at work. Plus I give one to my manager. I, we usually do a group one that I participate in. Um, or any other event, like we have Christmas in February is what it's called. And that's when we have Christmas with my sister and her family, because there's just way too much going on at Christmas for us to get together. And so um, that's that would be an example of another event that you might be doing. I have their names, um, everybody twice that we spend Christmas with because we do a stocking for them. And so I also would have um, for Matt family, and usually I spend about $20 on the stocking and um, then I'll market a stocking. And then over here, I'll put in my gift ideas and the things that I think I'd like to get for them that should be within the range of what I'm considering getting here. So let me scroll down here and show you that at the bottom, it gives the total. It's gonna total this column so that you can see how much you're gonna be doing in gifts. So like I mentioned, gifts is just one component of what happens at the holidays. Let's go over to this other tab. 
and take a look at this. This is going to pull in gifts and I haven't, I started this line, but I haven't finished it. I wanted to get this video done so you could see it, but this is really taking into consideration all the different things that come up in the holidays. So starting, and I'm just considering Thanksgiving. So for me, holiday planning is Thanksgiving through New Year's Eve. Plus we have Christmas in February. We have this, this additional event that we plan for. So there's a lot of things and a lot of different moving parts, depending on who you are and, and how involved you are in various things. You could be using every single thing that I have here. Other people will not use all of the different lines that I have here. It will vary from one, one person to the next or one family to the next. But the bottom line is I'm actually creating this so that I can sell it in my Etsy shop. And so this is brand new. I just started working on it a couple of days ago. I've been in it a couple of different times and I'm trying to figure out how to make it the uh, most universal with the least amount of customization. So this is why you see the number of events um, up here. I plan for each of these things. So I went through and I came up with different expense categories. And the intent is that this section is going to be a summary. And so we have holiday cards where um, typically there's just one set of holiday cards that go out. So I blacked this out and you and the total would just go in here. And this is actually a formula. Let me pull this up a little bit here. This is a formula that's going to pull in from some other things. So you can see this, this block down here for holiday cards. Well, holiday cards has several components to it. You need to have the photos taken. So if you're not going to use one that you took yourself and you're actually going to do a sitting, you want to account for how much that's going to cost for the, uh, the photo shoot itself. And then maybe possibly the photos or the files. Then you need to buy the cards. And so you're going to have to order those through somewhere. So if you're somebody who is spending money on photos, make sure you account for it in your budget. And then the cards, how much are you going to spend on cards? And then you want to account for the postage. So you have to buy everything and then stick them in the mail. And I think they're 50 cents a piece now. So if you send out 50 holiday cards, you're going to spend $25 on postage. All of that adds up. So I have this here so that I'm thinking about all of those things. And then your total will populate here. So if you spend, you know, a hundred dollars on, uh, on the photos themselves, and then you spend another hundred dollars on the cards and then another $25 on the postage, that's $225. I want to make sure I'm planning for that. Um, because even though I could cash flow a $225 expense pretty much any month of the year, there are a lot of people who can't. And the other thing is, this isn't the only expense. This is one of many things that happen in this amount of time during the year. So you want to save up for it throughout the year so it's not so stressful. This will allow you to enjoy the process because the finances aren't a stress on top of everything else that you have to do during a time of the year that is extremely busy. Now you'll notice up here, it populated up here and shows that I'm going to spend $225 on on holiday cards. Now, this is me guessing. I have no idea what this actually costs because we don't do, we don't do holiday cards. Our family does not, but I wanted to include it because lots of people do. Then we have decor. So decor can include several different things. So now we have decor. So there's indoor decor, there's outdoor decor. You have things that you might want to do at work for your workstation or your office. Um, and then I put other in here because I don't know what else people might want to decorate. Maybe you always buy something for your church, but I just included a couple of lines so that people have some, some wiggle room. And so are you buying for Thanksgiving? Are you buying for Christmas or Hanukkah? Are you buying for Kwanzaa for New Year's? Um, I included a couple of, of columns for other events so that you can put in here and put an estimate of what you think that you're going to spend. So I don't spend anything on Thanksgiving decor. I just don't do that. But for Christmas, um, we usually, let me just say, we usually spend for Christmas decor, but we spend it at in the middle of our season, not at the beginning of it. So we, I go shopping the day after Christmas. That's how I shop for all of our indoor and outdoor decor. And so indoors, you know, if I planned on doing like 50 for both, then I need a hundred dollars for the day after Christmas because I'm getting up early that morning and I'm going shopping. 
And I don't, I don't personally usually break out work separately, but maybe you want to buy something for, for your, your space. And so you're planning on spending $10. So you would do that for each event that you, for each holiday that you actually want to buy something for. And that way you can get a total. Let me move myself up here. You can get a total that will show how much you think you're going to spend on those items this year. Okay. So I just cut out all the editing on this so that you could see I, I updated these, uh, these formulas because they weren't right. So this shows that we're going to spend a total of $110 on decor. And let me just show you what happened up here. It populated up here. And since I only put it in for Christmas, it populates over here and shows how much I plan on spending on Christmas decor and it carries over here. So if I was going to do some things for New Year's Eve as well, maybe I want to get some hats and some of the, um, the little horns and things like that. Maybe I want to spend $20 on party favors or whatever. I would put 20 in here and you can see, so I'm spending a total of 70 on indoor decor. I'm spending a total of 20 on New Year's Eve, a total of 110 on Christmas. And then it's going to total everything for me at 130. Okay. And then it's also putting it up here for me so I can see overall how much I plan on spending on decor. This is going to collect all the data we're putting in down here. That's the goal. So let's just go through here. We have gift wrapping supplies. And so I have a section for that where, you know, you need to consider what type of gift wrap paper are you going to buy? Maybe you're going to buy gift bags, gift boxes, bows and ribbon, name tags, tape and scissors, just some of the basics. Um, these are all things, I mean, you can get a lot more extensive than this, but this, I feel like you can pretty much anything you buy could fall into this. So um, you would fill this in. And again, the numbers, I apologize that my picture's in the way. Uh, the numbers will total up over here and then they're going to pop up up here. So if we were going to buy, um, you know, $10 in paper and $5 in ribbon, and then I wanted maybe to get some um, name tags for the uh, for something that I'm doing for New Year's and maybe I'm going to spend 15 on that. That is going to add up. And again, these formulas are off. Let me fix those. OK, so I fixed the formulas everywhere. They were I, they were all kinds of messed up. I'm not sure how I did that. But now you can see the things that we have done so far are populating up here. We have 225 for holiday cards, 130 for decor. 30 for gift wrapping supplies. And so we would go down through each of these and you can see we haven't put gifts in and we're already at $385. This is exactly why I do this. I try to be very intentional with what I am going to be spending, like thinking about it now so that there aren't any surprises when I get there. And if I want to do this, if I want to buy these things, I can because we planned for it. We budgeted, we saved for it. So let's go down and look at the travel section here. I include, uh, for travel, I included everything that would be for anybody who needs to do any type of travel. So airfare and then the luggage fees that go with it, the car rental, Uber or Lyft fees that you're going to pay, gas. So if you rent a car or if you are driving somewhere, it's going to take gas to get there and get back the hotel or possibly an Airbnb that you're going to stay in when you get there, if you're not able to stay with family tipping because if you're if you're doing you know riding an uber or lyft or if you are staying in a hotel or airbnb or wherever and you've got people who are helping you tipping is important and you want to make sure to factor that in because two or five dollars here and there adds up really quickly and then snacks and beverages when you're traveling you um we're just much more prone to get something to eat and drink to keep us um, occupied, I guess. And so just plan on that. Just plan on $10 if that's what it means to have something for you and your family so that you don't have to be stressed out about the extra expense. So this will add all of that up if you are planning on doing any of these, any type of travel for any of these events. Now down here, I get into food and I break food down by the event because you could be doing food for multiple things. In our house, we have the kids come and do Thanksgiving with us the Saturday before Thanksgiving. You might end up going to several different stores to gather whatever it is you're making for your meal. And so I have several lines here for each one. And you know, last year I had, um, I had people over, we did Thanksgiving, we did Christmas Eve and then we did New Year's Eve. 
take that stress off yourself by thinking about it now and coming up with what your plan is going to be. So I have something for several different events here that you can fill each thing in. Now, when it's all said and done, it'll all populate up here and it's going to add up, including I'm going to pull the gifts in. Here's how I would do that. I would grab for this, I would do an equal sign and then I would come over to the gift planning section and I would take this total and hit enter and it will populate now over here. I'll work on formatting and all of that later, but that's how you do that. And so it shows right now that I added that in there. We're going to spend $195 on Christmas or Hanukkah if you are doing that. I'm trying to make this really functional for me. So it pulls it all in and I kind of get a snapshot up here and then I can look at all the details when I need to. Last year I did something similar. I have this format where this is all the gifts. And then down here, I plugged in all the numbers of the different things that I thought that we were going to do. One of the other events that we do in my family that others do something similar, we call it baking weekend. A lot of people bake for the holidays. So if you're doing that kind of event, then you want to make sure that you're planning for that. We've been doing it for 15 years, my mom and I, and I make sure that I budget at least a hundred dollars a year for that because we go, um, we split the the cost of the groceries and everything. And actually all of the packaging that we do with the holiday packaging and whatnot, I include in my budget that day after Christmas shopping in my number, I'm thinking about, do I need to pick up things for baking weekend for next year? And then what's really awesome because I do it the day after Christmas, when we have a bin, I come home and I put everything in the bin. And then when the holidays come around, you know, the next year I open everything up and it's like, Oh, look at all these things that I bought. It's really exciting and I don't have to worry about going to get all of that stuff when I'm preparing to actually do all these activities. To each their own, I am not always the most organized, but when it comes to this stuff, I am because I like a deal and the deals are the day after Christmas. So that's when to do it. Plan for it and then you can go shopping the day after Christmas too. I've also found, just so you guys know, some really great deals on things like stocking stuffers and that kind of thing that are non-perishable that I can save for the next year. I have a bin for that. I have a bin for things that are gifts <laughs> so that I have some of those. And then I do that inventory before I start my shopping for the year to make sure that, and I'm filling in, by the way, when I'm doing that, I'm filling this in to show what I actually have. And I, what I haven't figured out yet is whether or not I'm going to put an actual column on here, like the actual price. I had that on last year's planner, but it just seems so busy when I do that. So this is ever evolving. I spend a lot of time trying to capture this information so that we don't have so much guessing going on. We are already spenders by nature, both Matt and I, and we almost always go over what we plan to spend. So this keeps me on track. I mean, I would be so much worse if I didn't have this roadmap laid out for us. So hopefully the um, seeing these ideas and, and having an idea of what kinds of things you should plan for will help you to get ready for this year's holidays. So let's talk about once you get your total number right now, we have $455. So let's just use that really quickly. I am going to open up, um, well, I'll just do it right down here. So we have $455 and we have um, how many months? So it's the end of July. So let's say we have August, September, October, November, December. We have five months to save up our $455. So I'm going to put in five and you could use a calculator. I can do it over here on a calculator too. So, oh, by the way, I did that date calculation to see 150 days until Christmas from today while I'm filming this. So it is July 28th and um, yeah, it that seems like a long way away, but it's going to be here before we know it. So 455, five months. So let's just do that. $455 divided by five months is $91 per month is what you would need to save so that you could cover the expenses that we have in here thus far. Maybe yours is going to be less. Maybe your totals are, are going to be less than that. Bravo fantastic. If yours is only $300 and you have five months to save, that is going to be $60 a month. Let's just go ahead and do that. 300 
divided by five months is $60 per month. So then you can break it down by your pay cycles or by your budget cycles. So we budget monthly and we are each paid twice a month. So we get paid four times a month. Okay. So we could break this down in our scenario. If we, if we need to do $60 a month divided by four times, every time we get paid, we set aside $15. Does that seem manageable? That seems very manageable to me to break it down that way and just put a little bit away each time. If you do that every single time you get paid or every single time you have a budget cycle, then it will not seem so overwhelming when you need $300 starting at the end of November or $300 for Christmas. It won't be so stressful. I'd love to hear from you down below. Comment and let me know. Are you somebody who plans ahead or are you somebody who just kind of wings it? For years, I winged it. Just so you know, I totally winged it, but we haven't gotten as far as we have on our financial goals in the last two and a half years because I winged it because winging it is what got us into the mess. So if you are somebody who can wing it and, and be successful, then I applaud you because that is not us. <laughs> and, um, everybody does things a little differently for me having a plan in, I'm a spreadsheet nerd. So in a spreadsheet, that's where I need it. I save everything out in Google Sheets on our drive and then that way I can check it whenever I want to. I can update it. Matt can see it. He can get in and see what our progress is and that kind of thing. What it is that I said we were going to spend on the kids. And I did open an Etsy shop earlier this summer and so I do plan on putting this out there. It it's going to be a little bit. I need some time to really kind of let this thing evolve. But if you want to keep an eye out on when that's going to be posted, you can check out my shop and favorite it in Etsy. And that way you'll get notifications when I put up new uh, products, new digital products. I will include that link down below so that you can go do that. Also, if you're out on Etsy and you just want to find the budget bounce, you just need to type in the budget bounce with no spaces in the search bar and my shop will come up there. I would love to hear from you. If you have any suggestions for other things that I need to include here, if you are thinking about something that you didn't see on this, let me know. I would love to include it so that it is the most comprehensive and hopefully universal template that people can find to use for their own holiday planning. And actually, you know, now that I think about it, we could honestly put this together for all the holidays throughout the year that, you know, when I think about Valentine's day and Easter, um, even St. Patrick's Day, a lot of people decorate for St. Patrick's Day. It's not necessarily a gift giving thing, but they might celebrate, like they might have a celebration. They might go out, they might have people over. All of those things cost money. So it might even be, it might even make sense for me to create this, this template to sell to include all of the holidays. Hmm. That gives me something to think about. 4th of July, Memorial Day, Labor Day, when everybody's doing cookouts. Oh my goodness, like this thing could just get nuts. Anyway, so this is kind of how my brain works, you guys. I am, I apologize if I'm all over the place, but again, I hope you find this helpful and would, I would love to hear from you. If you have any ideas or tell me how you're doing with your planning and um, just leave me a comment down below. And next up, I am going to be talking about four sinking funds I feel are important for everyone to consider having. So click on this video right down here and I will meet you over there to talk all about it.